Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge based in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm excited to share with you in this video the use of CSA Sugar Art products. I have actually used CSA products since the late 80s. Eileen Walker, who was the original uh, owner and developer of CSA Sugar Art Company, um, I started using them and said working with Eileen and using her products uh, many, many years ago. So obviously CSA was the first company in the United States to start manufacturing luster dust and petal dust for the commercial cake industry, cookie and cupcake industry. And I'm very excited in this video to share with you one of the particular part of the extensive range. In this particular video, I'm going to concentrate on the use of the Ultra line. Now the Ultra line, these are FDA compliant and kosher certified, so totally edible. All right, now this is a very important part with obviously any dusting powder you're going to consume. So especially when we think of things like cake pops, cookies, cupcakes, or on cake parts that you're actually going to consume, it's really important that you use edible product, okay? Um, CSA also produce like edible dusting powders, so these are non-shiny, all right, and there is a separate uh, video on how to use these. These are mostly used for obviously dusting sugar flowers, but also used sometimes as an alternative to airbrushing for shading cakes, and also can be mixed with um, alcohol or other ingredients to make obviously a paint. So, and sometimes on figure modeling used for example for blush for cheeks, for um, makeup and things like that on figures. And then this is the um, non, these are non-toxic. So these are lusters, but these are non-toxic. Now non-toxic means that that is okay to consume in very, very small quantities, all right? But uh, if possible, I always, when I'm using, especially on something like a cookie or a cupcake where a customer, consumer is gonna consume the whole thing, I always make sure everything is totally edible, okay? But luster dust can be, again, used dry or they can be used with, um, obviously, other applications, as I'm gonna show. So really, when I show in this video how to use the Ultra Line, you could replace that with the luster dust, but remember, these are non-toxic. The Ultra Line is totally edible, okay? And then there's also the highlighter, which is also a separate video where I'll be showing how to use highlighter. Now, highlighter are metallics, but these are only used for decoration or removable pieces. You wouldn't use this on something you're going to actually um, eat, okay? A lot of people, um, unfortunately, sometimes uh, companies mislabel things or put things that are edible that are not edible. The nice thing about CSA Sugar Art is you do have the backup of all of the, um, the uh, obviously, foundation of uh, what everything is made from. So obviously you have all the FDA compliancy. They have certificates for every single dust they have produced. So this is available to customers as well as obviously to consumers. Um, CSA Sugar Art, uh, for those of you watching that maybe have a cake decorating store, uh, they also do customized packaging and labeling as well and also customized colors. Um, for consumers, for as I said retail consumers, if you go to CSA's website, you'll be able to actually look and see where you can buy these products. Products. So for example, my company, International Sugar Art Collection, we do sell quite a lot of the CSA range and I use most of these in my classes. Now, um, as I explained in this particular video, I'm going to talk specifically about the Ultra Line. Now you can see here the Ultra Line. This is a range of incredible colors, all right? So here obviously you've got the sort of the blues and greens and aqua colors and the sort of uh, blushes through to the rose gold and pink. And I'm gonna be showing some of those individually in a minute. Um, obviously like the mauves and the silver and then the sort of the beiges through to the sort of apricot tan colors and sort of pale yellow through to darker golds, okay? Now when using the dusting powders, I found that um, generally I use a little small opener you'd use for a soda can. Uh, that works really well to get the top off of those and it makes it very, very easy to pop them off. And when you put the lid back on these, just make sure you really put the lid back until it clicks, all right? So just make sure it actually clicks because you wanna make sure you don't put this away and the lid comes off, okay? Um, so very, very easy to use. You can use your fingers, but as I said, if you especially have arthritis or have a little issue with your fingers, you know, just use a little opener like that. Um, and as I said, this is a really, really easy way to get the lid off of these, but because they're nice and tight fitting. Now, when we use um, the Luster Dust, all right, the Ultra line, I said these are, as I said, totally, um, obviously, edible line of colors, all right? And I'm going to start off with the, um, the uh, actually, this uh, color here, 
which is called Sea of the Sand. This is almost like a sort of an ivory color. Okay, now the first way I'm going to show you how to use it, I'm going to show you multiple ways of applying this and using different techniques. Uh, first way I'm going to show you is dry. Okay, now Generally speaking, when I'm using, um, let's say I was going to use this sort of ivory cream color on a wedding cake, and I was making, I was going to brush this onto my fondant, I was going to brush this onto my bows, I was going to brush this onto my jewelry pieces, I would normally make those in a sort of an ivory creamy color. So this is just made in a creamy color, so if like this was a little brooch or a medallion on your cake. And so if you were going to cover your cake with rolled fondant, you'd use a cream or ivory, and you would also use obviously modified fondant or 50-50 paste colored cream or ivory for bows. Because when you, color, when you dust, you always want to have a paler version of what the dust is underneath to get that nice sort of subtle and also nice uh, depth of color, okay? And you'll see that a little bit more on some of the other colors. Now, when we dust, um, of course, you know, if you were doing small pieces like this, you could put them on some paper towel or onto a piece of paper, onto a napkin, and use that. And uh, generally, when I'm using dusting powders, I would just use a napkin or a piece of paper towel. Now, I never take powder straight from the pot, all right? So I never take powder straight from the pot onto there because you're gonna get an uneven amount. So normally, I take a little bit of powder. Now, you could, if you're just doing a very small application, you could just put some powder onto a napkin like this. Um, if you were doing a larger amount, you can put some into a little container like this, and then when you finished with the dust, then this makes it easy to then put it back into the container, okay? So like if you're putting it into there, and I'll show you some of the container ones in a little while, but if you're just dusting a small application. And I'm just using a soft brush. Generally, the type of brush I would use would be sort of a soft synthetic brush used for like craft application. So anything you generally buy in a craft store, this would be used for acrylic type paints. So just a soft brush is what we use. And um, we're gonna use this, and just gonna brush this over the top of the surface of the, you see I'm using like a little bit of a scrubbing action, all right? So when I'm doing sort of smaller, smaller pieces, I would just use a scrubbing action. Now, when you use the powder dry, it's gonna give you a very subtle effect, all right? So, and I'm gonna show you different options to give a more intense um, luster. But when you use the powder dry, it will give you a soft effect. Now, when we are doing large surface areas, so for example, if you were going to say dust a whole cake or you're gonna dust drapes, a lot of times I use a pump brush, all right? These are actually used for mineral makeup. And this particular one has got the CA I see a pearl in here, this has got pearl dust. So when I'm, for example, uh, in classes, when my students are dusting drapes and bows or the whole of a surface cake, you can either do this with a cuff down. Um, so that means when you're doing, for example, like uh, you're just doing a stencil or you're doing a small surface area with a cuff down, that will give you a sort of like an intense, so you see you've got like a sort of an intense pearlescent look onto there, and then when you do like large surface area, like a cake or a drape, you, and you just would pump this just a little bit so the color comes out. Then when you're doing the pearl dust, you see the pearl dust would go over the whole surface. Obviously, I'm just showing you this on gray, but on a white surface, and you get that pearlescent look onto your cake, all right? So that would be um, how you do that. And these come empty, and you just pop the top off of these. And a lot of sugar craft companies sell these. It's called a pump brush, OK? But that's a great way to apply the color to a large surface area. And the reason is, is with the bigger the surface area, the larger the brush you're going to use. Because if we use the brush like this, which I've just used to say dust a cake, you're going to get like stripes on it, OK? So you want to use a larger brush so you get more of a surface uh, cover of the surface area, OK? Um, and uh, so that's sort of how you use the powder dry. And of course, the powders, of course, come in lots of colors. So you've got different intensity and things. And, uh, but as I said, generally, when you're using it dry, that's going to give you a very subtle look, all right? So it's going to give you a more subtle look. Now, the second one I'm going to go on to is I'm going to show you using um, alcohol, all right? Um, generally, vodka is what most people use, all right? Um, vodka is a clear alcohol. Obviously, there are other clear alcohols like tequila, vodka, uh, gin, um, also uh, white rum as well. So some people use that. But this, as I said, is just vodka, which is what most people use. And generally, just use a you know, cheap brand of vodka. Now, generally, when you're painting, you want to use a little dish, all right? Um, you can also do this, obviously, on a plate and then just wash this. And if you're doing a color on a regular basis, what a lot of times I do is I just mix it in a little dish. I'd put this in a small little zip-top bag, 
and then I just put it in, you know, and then when I want to reuse it again, I just add more alcohol to it, so you're not really wasting the product. On this particular one, I'm gonna use a pink, all right? So I'm gonna actually use this color here, berry pink. Now again, you can see, I'm actually gonna paint this onto a pale pink. Because just like when you paint a wall of a house, okay, if you were painting a wall of your dining room red, you're generally gonna put a primer on of almost like a terracotta red color. It gives your red much more intensity, all right? If we started off with white and we painted pink on top, it's gonna to be a lot more subtle, okay? If you start off with pale pink and you paint pink on top, you're gonna to get more intensity and depth of color. So I'm gonna just take a little, um, you know, you can use like a little mini knife, a little small spoon, something basically just to put a little bit of the luster in here. A little goes a long way, okay? And then this, these are all water soluble, so you can just, you know, keep a container of water, so you just wash your brush, brushes out, um, obviously, with uh, water. And then I'm gonna take some alcohol, all right? So I'm gonna use here some alcohol. So this is some vodka, and generally I use this in a dropper bottle. All right, I'm gonna, just gonna put a couple of drops of vodka onto here. All right, I'm gonna just mix this through. Okay, so you can see how you mix this through, so you're gonna get this nice. And you see, when I do the pink on the top here, now generally, um, if you're gonna do like a, something that you're gonna paint all over, I would use something like a toothpick, or here is a little, my little companion tool I use for flower making, because what this does, this uh, will obviously enable you so it doesn't move around, okay? But you see how when you paint with the, just paint all over, you see how you're gonna get this sort of beautiful, and you see how that's gonna give you a much more sort of intense pink. Now, if you did the same on white, okay, so we did the same on white, it's still gonna be pink, but it's gonna be a paler pink. So sometimes you're gonna start off with white, or sometimes you start off with a paler version of what you want to end up with, uh, to give you obviously a more intense color. But you see how much more, the pearlescent part of it, and then you know if you're doing small surface areas, you can do this. And then the same thing, if you were doing um, the surface of a cake, uh, you would obviously, with that, you would put a, um, you would use a uh, larger brush, okay? And, uh, and then the other thing is, when you're using a brush, and you're brushing the surface of a cake, you don't want to sort of come back on yourself too much, because as it starts, the alcohol starts to evaporate, then what happens is that you're going to start to get streaks and it will pull the last stock off. If you need to do a second coat, best thing to do is wait for it to dry and then go over with a second coat, okay? So that's my second option. Now, third option is using Everclear. Now, Everclear is a uh, grain alcohol, all right? This is very unique to the United States. This is basically not available outside of the United States, but it's something we use a lot for painting, for airbrushing. So Everclear is a high grain alcohol. It's actually used in manufacturing also of lemon extracts and extracts as well. So this means this dries more quickly. So if you were doing a project, um, and especially um, this is what I use if I was painting onto royal icing, okay? Because royal icing, if your uh, liquid is too wet from the vodka, it would actually dissolve the royal icing. So let's say for example, this is a royal icing flooded cookie, all right? So this is flooded with royal icing. And then what I want to do there is I'm going to use, here I'm going to use the rose gold color. Now rose gold is a huge trend color and this is a beautiful, this CSA Sugar Art one is a beautiful rose gold. But if I was going to use rose gold to paint onto a royal icing cookie, okay, and this is also applies like if I was using uh, gel colors or luster dust or uh, petal dust and painting on royal icing, I always use Everclear, not vodka, okay. And uh, so what you do here is, again, it's going to just take a couple of drops here. And then we're going to take a brush here. I'm just going to just mix this up with my brush. But what it means is if you are going to be painting onto a cookie, and you're going to just sort of paint a design onto here. You know, I'm just going to do like almost like little leaf shapes or things like that. Because the Everclear almost evaporates instantly, this means you're not going to, it's not going to actually like dry the, uh, it's not going to dissolve the royal icing underneath, you see? So you see how you're going to get this uh, nice painted effect onto there. And obviously this would give you, you know, if you were doing a monogram or painting a, a letter onto there, something like that, this is the technique I would use. Also on things like, you know, if I was doing uh, royal icing uh, swan, and so here on the swan's beak, 
if I was going to paint that, I would use the um, Everclear because then what will happen is it's not going to dissolve the royal icing, okay? Whereas because the vodka takes longer to evaporate, so the Everclear is a really good option when a painting on royal icing especially. And uh, I said a lot of people use Everclear for obviously when they're doing um, applications like uh, on airbrushing, okay? So that's our, um, that's our next step application. Now the next one I'm going to show you is going to actually be using um, some vegetable shortening, okay? So what we call vegetable shortening, you can use coconut oil in Europe, we call this vegetable fat or white fat. All right, so vegetable shortening. Now this is an alternative um, also in countries where you can't use or consume alcohol, like the United Arab Emirates and certain other countries I teach in, I can't use alcohol. They don't consume alcohol or sell alcohol. So obviously using vodka or Everclear and even lemon extract. Remember, lemon extract is about 90% alcohol. Okay, so a lot of people think lemon extract is not alcohol. It is, it's basically grain alcohol and lemon oil. So vegetable shortening is something you can use. I'm gonna show you here a little bit of like a stenciling. So if you were doing a cookie, now, typically what I do is I keep a designated brush for this um, because when you're using vegetable shortening or coconut oil or fat, you're going to get like the fat is going to get into the bristles. That means that if you try to, even with washing that, um, it's never, it's always going to be a bit oily. All right, and so you just wash this with a little bit of dish soap and then you can just keep this specifically for the shortening technique. So I use this quite a lot for stenciling, all right? It's a nice way if you're doing, using powder colors for stenciling, what the vegetable fat, a little bit of vegetable fat is all you need, but what that does is it's going to give you more of a, a thick mixture and so when you then stencil, you're not gonna have the issue with the loose dust coming off. So I'm gonna take a little bit, I'm gonna actually use this color here, which is gonna be ocean green, which is this beautiful color. I'm gonna put a little bit of this. And again, this could be done in a little dish or obviously on a piece of wax paper or parchment paper. And then you're just gonna take just a, just a little tiny bit. You need very, very little of this, all right? I'm just gonna mix this up. So really, as I said, you're using a very, very tiny amount of the vegetable shortening or coconut oil or fat. There's a solid fat. You can use high ratio shortening. And in here, I've got just a little bit of fondant rolled out. And you see then when I go over the top here with my, here with my uh, brush on top of the stencil. So what this is gonna do, you're still gonna get the nice luster, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, and this will dry, you know, because you're putting it on very, very thin and you're using just a very, very tiny amount of um, vegetable fat. So this would dry. So if you were doing, say, a cookie, you could um, use this um, technique on a cookie, and then you could actually, you know, use this, for example, for a monogram. So then when you take this off the top, you see how that's going to give you this sort of stencil design. So of course, this could be cut into the, for the top of a cookie, this could be a monogram. And this could be, um, as I said, would be an alternative, especially if you're working with a client or as I said those of you in countries where we don't use alcohol all right because most most cake artists typically will always use vodka all right but as I said there are a lot of alternatives so I'm showing you all these different techniques all right now next thing um, I'm going to show you is going to be lemon extract okay so I'm going to use this blue color here. So this is uh, shows a uh, rolled fondant cookie all right so I do a lot of my cookies with rolled fondant and uh, lemon extract. Now when I'm generally painting with lusters, personally, a lot of times I like to use lemon extract. And the reason is lemon extract, you know, this is the Nielsen brand, Massey brand, all right, but in the ingredients here, it's 90% alcohol, natural oil of lemon, a little bit of water, all right? So this is, as I said, got lemon oil in it, all right? This lemon extract looked in, used in baking and things. And, um, but lemon extract is, uh, because what happens is when you're using, these are all luster dust, when the actual alcohol evaporates, the oil of the lemon will keep the luster more shiny, all right? So actually I prefer using lemon extract as to using alcohol, okay? Uh, like vodka, because vodka will go more dull when it dries, lemon extract will give it a little bit more of a sheen. And when we use the, when we use this technique here, going to use so again, a little bit of blue here is going to be taken. So I'm going to take a little bit of the blue here. This is a celestial blue, which is a really pretty blue color. 
and then here I'm going to use lemon extract. Now again, with most of the things, I like to use dropper bottles, because you can imagine if you take this and you pour this, you're going to get far too much um, out. So most of these things I use dropper bottles, and you can buy these from specialty cake decorating stores and online to fit different size bottles. Now remember, when you're working with Everclear, and you're working with lemon extract. These are both grain alcohol, high alcohol content based products. So they evaporate very quickly. So don't mix up too much at a time because it will evaporate very quickly. All right, but so, and again, um, so you're gonna put just a couple of drops into here. And of course this tastes really nice as well. I'm just gonna mix this in here like so. And you see then when you paint the when you paint with the lemon extract, so see, you're just going to just paint this in to the, I'll just show you part of this butterfly here over here. But you can see how you're going to get this sort of beautiful, this beautiful look on the on the butterfly. And I said when that um, grain alcohol evaporates, you're going to get still have the nice luster from, from the blue, see? But you see how quickly that's dried, you see? Whereas vodka would take a lot longer. So this is good for, as I said, especially when you're painting onto. And if you don't have um, Everclear, those of you who are watching this in countries where you don't have Everclear available, this will be an alternative to on royal icing as well, because this is basically like 90%, so you could use this also to paint royal icing pieces also. Okay, so this is using, um, Ever, uh, this is using lemon extract, and um, then using obviously the Ultra. Okay, remember all of these are convertible in using luster dusts as well, and also petal dusts also, okay? So that's gonna be this one. Now, next one I'm going to show you is going to be using the, um, I'm going to show you how to use the uh, luster dust with piping gel. Now, um, a very big trend at the moment are a lot of these, um, for example, this is sugar press products. You know, these are companies that produce these. So a lot of cookie cake artists now use these on cake boards and things like that. So one option of these is once you've embossed this is to paint it in. But if you want to have more of a sort of a luster, um, what you can actually do here, and this will actually stay, you know, this will stay shiny. That is just to mix the luster dust with piping gel. Okay, so you just would take some piping gel, and then to the piping gel, you'd add a little bit of color here. I'm gonna put in a little bit of the green. Uh, this is the green onyx color here. So you just would put a little bit of that into, into there. And got a little bit in there already, but you just mix this through. So what you're actually doing here is you're making like a pearlescent, so you see how you actually will get like a pearlescent piping gel. So you see how it's actually pearlescent, so it looks sort of shiny because of the pearl dust that's in there. And then you can either paint that in, so you can either use a, a fine brush and you can paint that in, you can put it into a uh, needle a syringe, all right, so this is a syringe I use a lot, all right, for this type of application, because it's easy, you just actually do this. Um, and then alternatively, you can also use a small piping bag. I'm just gonna show you a little piece of this, so I'm just gonna use a small bag here. So I've just put some of that mixture into the bag, and you see then what you would do here is you just would then pipe. So when you then pipe into there, and then you just take a paintbrush, and with your paintbrush, this would just sort of blend in and you just would fill in the cavity because when you emboss this uh, into the cavity, you've got obviously the depth there. And you see this would then, if you did this in gold or in silver, this would stay shiny. Now this one I did yesterday and you can see it is dry, okay? So I thought we were using piping gel, but after about 24 hours, the piping gel will dry, okay? So if you were using this on a cookie or whatever, just do these um, you know, like a day before and they will be dry um, and then not sticky, okay? So that is using piping gel with luster dust, all right? So you can see there's lots of different options. So you're not just limited to dry or with, with alcohol. Now, next technique I'm going to show you is going to be using um, oil, okay? Now, um, you can use any like flavoring oil, all right? This is actually like pure lemon oil. Um, 
is like a Loran oil, which is obviously very popular here in the US, but obviously there's many different companies make flavoring oils. But this is natural oil of lemon, and this would be used in uh, chocolate manufacturing, in different flavors for cookies and things. And then you can also buy like artificial. This is actually an artificial flavor orange oil. For painting, it doesn't really matter, okay? Uh, when you're using obviously in cookies or flavoring in cakes, I would recommend the pure oil. But for here, you can use natural oil or artificial oil. Now you could also use lemon, you could use lime, uh, these oils come in different, um, different obviously flavors. I generally use orange oil. All right, but I said lime could be all used as well. Now, now this is really good when you're using um, when we're doing a large surface area um, because it goes on very fluid. Alcohol, whether you're using vodka, or Everclear, lemon extract and especially the lemon extract and the Everclear, dry pretty quickly. So you sometimes get like a very streaky look to it. But so using, um, using obviously the, uh, the orange oil or the lemon oil, you're gonna get a nice fluid um, look to that. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that onto a napkin here. Now again, when you're making things silver, you always wanna start off with gray, okay? When you make things yeah, gold, you always wanna start off with yellow, okay? So that's a very important tip I will share with you. So when you're doing, say, you're gonna paint a whole cake gold or silver, you want to use gray fondant or yellow fondant, okay? If you're making gold bows, gold letters, yellow, you're making anything, you wanna use gray, okay? And uh, there are companies like ProGel have a gray gel color, but also you can use a little tiny bit of black, okay? Uh, just to make a gray base color gain the intensity of your color and especially in the um, the video i'm going to show using the highlighters which are the sort of the the decorative use only ones that's a really really important point there i would share about obviously metallics all right but anyway so i'm going to use here the um this is the um the gray color i'm going to use the coin silver so remember these are all the ultra line all right so these are all totally edible fda compliant now of course when you look at the silver here and the silver here all right, this is, the, this is a real like metallic silver, but this is not an edible, all right? This is used just for pieces that you can remove from a cake, all right? This is a non-edible silver. But unfortunately, as I said, a lot of people use this for things they're gonna consume, and you really shouldn't, all right? It should be on things that are just able to be removed from, from a cake, all right? Um, but as I said, so this is the coin silver, and uh, so on this coin silver, so like if I was doing, say, jewelry pieces on a cookie or doing something like that, I would generally use the, uh, the coin silver one. So this is the coin silver, okay? And um, this is gonna be your orange oil, all right? And then with your orange oil, when you paint with that, just use a brush and then just use a little bit of dish soap uh, just to sort of clean, clean that oil um, out of there, okay? You don't have to keep a designated one for that, but as I said, like you would with the shortening. So you see, so you mix this with the oil, all right, and you're just gonna add enough oil to this. Now, um, when you're using this, again, you see what I could do is you just literally, when you finish with this, you could just put this little dish into a zip top bag, and that's what I do. And then next time I need that, all I need to do is just add a little bit more orange oil. You're not gonna waste then by washing that all away or throwing it away. And then again, I'm gonna just use a toothpick. Just hold this. But you see how beautiful this silver looks, all right? Now remember, this is totally edible, all right? So if you were doing cut out letters for a cookie, but you see how much um, the oil is very, very easy to work with, and it's because it's very fluid. So um, if you were gonna paint a whole cake, all right, with this, then of course you just would use a larger brush. So you'd use like a larger, like a flat, flat brush or a pastry brush and brush this over the surface, all right? And uh, that would be brushed over the surface of, of, of that. But you see how you're gonna get this nice um, silver here. And having the gray underneath is really, that, that's the tip, uh, the big tip I'm sharing with you is have a starting off. And a lot of times my students are sort of amazed by some of these little tips because they're things that they've never thought of or things that they've struggled with at home. And, um, but this makes it really, really easy to use. But you see how you're gonna get this beautiful silver here, um, obviously using the, um, using, starting off with a gray base, all right? And if I was gonna paint with the golds, all right, so if I was gonna paint with either of the two golds here, I'd start off with a yellow base. So this is the, the, ye the yellow here, all right? So this would be the yellow you'd use for the gold, okay? Now, um, when you're working with generally orange oil, 
and you're working with um, extracts and you're working with alcohol, you have to be really careful on things you're going to handle, all right? So for example, if you were making something like this um, and you're going to then stick this onto your cake, uh, if you pick this up, the natural oil in your skin will take the well, we'll pay powder off. That also will happen with luster dust as well, okay? So generally you either want to put gloves on or an alternative when you're handling things once they're dry like letters or that, just use a pair of tweezers, okay? So you don't physically ever want to pick something up that's got luster dust on it because you will pull the luster dust off whether you're using, uh, whether you're using the alcohol like the vodka, the Everclear or the orange oil, okay? Now, another alternative, and this is going to be the last um, variation I'm going to show you, is actually using confectioner's glaze. Now, confectioner's glaze, you know, there's different companies do confectioner's glaze. This is a food grade shellac, so it's used in panning machines for, uh, in the US, candies like cinnamon red hots, M&Ms, they use panning machines. But confectioner's glaze is a food grade shellac, and uh, this is used to give things high shine. So we use this for berries and eyes and things like that. Again, I have this in a little um, dropper bottle. This is the easiest way rather than pouring it. So you notice everything I have in dropper bottles. Now, um, this is when you mix the glaze up. So you can actually use like a little small container, like a little portion cup with a lid on it. And then again, just put that in a zip top bag and you can keep that as long as it's kept airtight or just buy a little jar uh, with a screw top lid and you can actually mix this up as a mixture and keep this. Now I'm going to use um, on this one, I'm going to use some of the confectioner's glaze and I'm going to use here um, the Egyptian gold, all right, Pharaoh's gold and Egyptian gold. So you see like obviously one is a little bit more yellowy, one is a little bit more sandy color. So again, you know, depending what color you want to use, all right. So um, I'm actually going to use, I'll use the um, Pharaoh's gold here. And so what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of this into the container. As I said, you could do this in a, in a container that has a lid on it, and then that way you can um, just store that. You take your confectioner's glaze. Okay, and I'm going to add my confectioner's glaze here. So what you're really making here is like an edible nail polish, okay? So this means when you're doing um, letters, um, when you're doing things like jewelry pieces, you're making brooches for a cake, for example, then it means you can actually handle those and the gold won't come off, all right? Now, when you, you do this, all right, you're gonna use, there's two options. One of them is to use a disposable paintbrush. You know, these are very inexpensive um, to buy. They're just used for crafts and things. So basically what you do is you'd mix this up with your disposable paintbrush. You'd paint this onto the project all right, and then what you do is you just would throw this away because confectioner's glaze is not water soluble, okay? So that means the confectioner's glaze, uh, you can't uh, wash this brush in water because the, the glaze will, um, as I said, will uh, just seize up. Um, so that's one option, all right, is to use a brush like this. The second option is to use a, put this over here, the second option is to use a regular brush, but then what you would need to do is you need to clean that with, for example, like a glaze uh, thinner. Um, this again, you know, different companies have thinners for uh, confectioner's glaze. Uh, you can also use like an isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Uh, this is actually like an acetone based product. You could use acetone or non-acetone nail polish remover as well, um, or a paint thinner, okay? And uh, what this is gonna do is this would then just be painted. And so when you paint this on the top of the piece here, so the advantage of this one, once this is dry, this gold will not come off, all right? So that means that you could use this for, as I said, for a jewelry piece or for lettering pieces, and you can handle these afterwards and use these. And again, you know, as I explained, because these are edible, they're not gonna have that really bright, bright, shiny gold that you would have with the highlighters, all right? Um, because remember, those are non-edible ones. But when you're using this for an application, like say on a 50th wedding anniversary, for a cookie, for the lettering or something, you know that that's a totally edible product, okay? Um, but so then what you would do is you take a little bit of the cleaner and put it in a little, and then you just would clean your brush, okay? And you just use that to clean your brush. And then obviously that would mean that your, um, your brush would be, would be clean. And um, so that's sort of how you would use that. And just let that dry. And then of course you would take that and then you would put this, once it's dry, you would just um, I'll pop this on a piece of paper. You just would put that somewhere to dry. And then once that's dry, you could actually handle this. So we could pick this up with our fingers 
and uh, we could push that onto the cake. You could obviously pick up your letters and uh, things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation showing how to use the CSA Sugar Art Ultra Dust. And I look forward to seeing you in some of my other videos showing some of the other amazing products from CSA Sugar Art. Until next time, this has been Nicholas Lodge, Sweet Wishes, and I'll see you real soon.